Hello, this video is going to show how we can perform static analysis and structural coverage with Qt. What I did yesterday is I downloaded the latest version of Qt Creator and I opened one of the example projects that comes with it and that was this simple drag and drop robot. And so what I'd like to be able to do is I'd like to be able to analyse the code that was generated from this application and see is it compliant to a coding standard such as MISRA C++ 2008. I'd like to be able to look at a number of metrics on the code, such as the cyclomatic complexity, ensuring the functions are not over complex. And finally, I'd like to be able to run the application. And as it runs, I'd like to be able to find out, well, how much of the code have we actually exercised? Now, the starting point is the Eldrake launcher. Over here, I've selected to use the MinGW compiler, and I'm now going to invoke what we call the, the build import. And inside the build put import, I've configured it to invoke the Qt creator and I've told it to start in the folder where I have this particular application. So let me load the project and let's go and perform a rebuild. It's important to do a rebuild because Eldray is going to listen to what happens. So, OK, that's now just perform the build. Let's go and execute this and see what happens. So let's start debugging. And we're going to see the, the, the little robot appear and I should be able to go and actually drag and drop the colours onto it. All right, let's close that down. And now I'm going to close down Qt Creator. And as we can see, Eldray's analysed what happened and it's seen we've generated an executable. We've got a number of uh, source files and I'm now going to go and oh, we can also take a look at the include paths as well as any preprocessor symbols. So now I can open this with TB Vision, and I'm going to be able to analyze the code. Now, I don't particularly need that one. I'm going to remove that one. I just want to analyze these three files here. So let's go and do that. OK, before I analyze the code, I do need to do a few settings. I've already checked to ensure that I'm using the Misra C++ 2008. But I also want to perform the dynamic analysis. And so I want to have the most efficient uh, mechanism for capturing the history. And that is where I'm going to compress the execution history into a structure bitmap. And there, every probe is simply going to set 8-bit inside that. And that's very efficient. OK, let's go and perform the analysis. If I wanted, I could actually go and create my own coding standard. Or I could, of course, select any other coding standard, such as the CERT or the Altasar standards. But in this particular case, I'm going for the, the MISRA C++ 2008 standard. We can see here we're performing the various different phases. And we should now be able to go and, OK, that's just generated the instrument of program, generating the reports. And now we should be able to go and do a code review. So here we can see we have a, a number of violations. If I wanted, I could actually say, OK, we're not allowed to use new. I could say, well, let's uh, actually exclude that. Let's go enable it in the entire system. And I can put uh, my justification in here. So then I'll put my justification in as to why. Of course, I should put some valid text in there. And that has now removed that violation. If I wanted, I could go through and I can show the violations I've excluded. So it looks like I've already excluded a couple of violations here. Let's generate a report. Let's generate a report against the MISRA C++ 2008 standard. And here we're going to be able to see that we're not compliant. We can see very clearly where we're not compliant, where we are compliant. And also we can see, OK, that's just a documentation. Right. What about uh, the annotated code? Here we're able to, to view the code. And inside the code, we can see very clearly color coded to show us whether or not uh, some are mandatory, some are required or some are just documentation. So we can see these are advisory and the red ones are required. What about uh, have we justified any violations? Well, let's take a look and we can see, yes, in this particular case, we've excluded 22 violations. And there we can see the justification that we added into the, into the project here. Right, what about the, the quality of the code? Well, let's take a look at maybe a call graph. So a well, call diagram. And here we're going to be able to put this into various different modes. For instance, here I can sort and find the most complex function with a cyclomatic complexity. This one's got a cyclomatic complexity of three. That means there's three paths through the code. And we can view that on a flow diagram and we can see we've got one, two, three paths. 
take a look at this one. This has just gone to two paths. This was the most complex. It's not really that complex, but it's got one, two, three, four paths through the code. So what I'd like to be able to do now is to execute the code. And as it executes, I'd like to be able to find out which blocks have we executed and which box have we not executed. So let's go and perform what we call the, the dynamic analysis. So to do that, I'm going to go and I need to do a, a few little changes. I need to go and first of all, perform the build. And I'm going to do the build externally using Qt Creator. I also need to set up the path. So I'm going to grab this path here. And that is the path where my execution history is going to get stored. So I need to go and tell it not to look in this folder, but instead to look for the execution history inside this folder here. All right, so let's go and perform the build. So this is now going to uh, switch the original code with the instrumented code. And if I now go and open the Qt creator, we should see now we have the instrumented code. So once again, I'm going to open the same project we had before. And here we've got the instrumented version of the source code. So let's go and perform a build. And I'm probably going to get a few warnings, but we can just ignore those, probably just a, a few unused parameters. OK, that's now built. Let's now go and execute this. So we'll start it running. And I can now go and, as we can see, exercise my application. Well, let's not do too much. Let's find out what coverage we've obtained from that. So that should have created some execution history files. And there we can see we've just created these here. So that's good. So now let's go and tell the tool to actually analyze those. So I'm going to tell it to perform the dynamic coverage analysis. It's now going to analyze those execution history files. We should be able to end up with some coverage. Okay, so let's go back and view our system call diagram. This time we'll put it into a, a coverage mode. And now we're able to see exactly the coverage we've obtained. So we've got no coverage for some of these functions. But for here, we can see the coverage we've obtained. And once again, on a flow diagram, we can see very clearly the path we've taken in green. In red, we've not executed it. And in yellow says we've executed it. We've come out of this exit, but we haven't exited by this path here. Again, we can take a look at any of these other functions and we can see very clearly the paths we've taken through that code. Well, let's try and increase the coverage here. So let's close that down. And let's go once more and I'll do a build again. So I need to do a build because if I just try and execute the uninstrumented code from within uh, Qt Creator, it's going to rebuild the original code, not the instrumented code. So once again, I'll do a build here and then I should be able to go and execute this. And this time I'll try and, and uh, increase the coverage. So once again, let's start the debugging. And I'm going to be able to start dragging and dropping. And let's go and do a few things here. Ah, that's what I wanted to find was the head. And uh, they're trying to drop it somewhere else. That probably fails. OK, that's probably enough. Let's close that down and see what coverage we've obtained. So I can go and close this down. Again, I'm going to put the original code back as it was. And I'm now going to tell it to just perform the dynamic coverage analysis again. This time, hopefully, we're going to be able to see that we've increased the coverage. OK, so that's finished. This time, maybe let's generate a, a code coverage report. So here we've got the code coverage. So we can see very clearly the coverage we've obtained. So we have 100% for our main. We don't have 100% for color item, but we can go into this. We can scroll down. And we can see with no coverage at all for this function here, mouse release event. So I'm not sure what I need to do in order to get coverage for that. OK, so hopefully that's given you a quick overview of how we can work with the Qt Creator. And if you'd like more information, then please don't hesitate to, to contact us at LDRE. Thank you.